G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today I'm looking at a user request. Um, it's an interesting one, um, so thanks, Louise, for, for your question, which is, can I show you how to split a wall um, with a topography and update its profile sketch? The good news is it's possible, um, although we will be generating a new wall in this case, and we'll be using a few custom packages to take some shortcuts here. In this case, using um, spring nodes, clockwork, and also the wombat package, which I haven't actually used on the channel before. Um, it actually looks like it's being updated still, which is cool. I wasn't aware of that. And we're gonna put these all together in order to generate a new wall with a modified profile. Now, it's really important um, to think about what a wall with a modified profile on a topography actually represents, because we wouldn't usually actually really put many elements onto a topo like this, right? Uh, usually we'd be penetrating the ground, putting them down to a footing or something like that. Uh, it might suit something maybe like a fence or, or an element that sits on the ground, but even still, you're gonna have things like fence posts going down to footings. So just be aware that this is probably more of a conceptual uh, application and always think about what your BIM model represents from a construction perspective. Uh, but having said that, this is an interesting tutorial in learning how to deal with geometry, which I don't often do, so I thought it was worth sharing anyway. Anyway, let's get started. So in this case, we're working with the basic Revit sample project, but I have modeled a wall um, that fully overlaps the topography. I'm gonna modify its sketch so that it follows uh, the site's profile. Now, obviously I could just go edit profile and trace this, but the challenge with topography is it's very hard to see where that condition occurs. And you, sure, you could pull a little section box or a section up to it and just sketch it manually, uh, but it may not always be that simple for a complex site. So in this case, I'm gonna use Dynamo to intersect the topography uh, with the wall. Um, and effectively that's gonna give us the ability to regenerate a new wall with the sketch. So in this case, we can't just take the existing wall and add a profile to it as far as I'm aware. I believe that we need to do this using a creation method. Um, so I'm gonna be using a custom node, but I know that the method that the custom node is using is most likely this one in the Revit API, which in this case, not only takes a wall type and a level and an offset, but also a profile in the creation step as well. And in this, we can create a wall with a profile uh, based on another wall and then just delete the original wall. So it's probably not quite gonna suit every scenario, but as far as I know, this is the, one of the only ways to do it, if not the only way. So in this case, um, I'm just gonna open up Dynamo and make a new script and I'll just save. And in this case, I'm just gonna, just gonna call this demo. And the first thing I'll be doing is just collecting my elements for my study. So I'm gonna get two um, select model element nodes First, I'll get my wall, and then I'll also get my topography. And we're gonna to wanna, to, in this case, um, deconstruct these. So we're gonna firstly get the geometry of our wall. And now we should be able to see our wall, uh, just a whole solid in this case. Um, so we're gonna end up with one solid. I'm also then gonna get the mesh of the topography. So in this case, I'm just gonna do topography mesh and we're gonna use a node um, from the springs package, um, in this case, the mesh to poly surface node, um, which can be quite slow on really complicated topographies. So it might not always suit every single project. In this case, it's gonna take just a little bit of time. You can tell it to use more um, processes if you have uh, multiple processes. Uh, so I assume it takes this calculation externally into somewhere that can take advantage of uh, more processing power. But in this case, we can see now we have our topography as a single poly surface, which we can actually clash <clears throat> with our wall. Now in this case, because our topography is just a flat surface, we're not actually gonna wanna just do an intersection. We're gonna wanna split it into two pieces and take the higher piece above the topography. So in this case, I'm gonna look for my split geometry node. And I'm gonna, in this case, split my wall using my poly surface. So your poly surface will need to fully overlap the wall in order to do a successful split, um, as far as I'm aware. So in this case, we end up with a list with two solids, but which one is the one that we want? Well, there's a few ways you can assess which one is higher. In this case, I'm just gonna take the centroid of each of them, so the center of their, their bounding box or their solid geometry, um, I should say. So in this case, I'm gonna look for a solid, solid centroid, and this will give us two points. If I do um, start hiding some of this geometry, we can probably follow what's happening a little bit more easily. So that's my geometry, but we can see now we have two points. And the one that's higher is typically in most cases gonna be the one that is the piece that we wanna keep. So what I'm gonna use is the point.z node. And this is gonna give us just the height of those two points. 
What I can do now is sort them by that. So I'm gonna use the sort by key. And in this case, um, we are probably dealing with levels. Notice we have level three, two, one. And then we also have in this case, level three, two, one. So I just wanna work across level one, um, just to simplify my list structure. So I'm gonna to switch to level one, just so we can sort those points by their keys. And now we've got a much simpler list structure. We can see in this case, the first item is gonna be the one with the higher Z in this case. So I can just use a first item node. And if I just go back and start turning off some of these previews, we'll see that now we're just left with this upper piece of the wall split by the topography. So this is the element we're gonna to wanna to extract the outer curves from to inform our sketch. So we're gonna to have to go back a step at this point. And there's a few ways we can get the outside of the wall itself. Uh, my preferred method is to find the point at the middle of the wall, it's normal, and then get the plane and intersect that whole plane with the wall geometry, which will give us the outer curves. Noting if you have a door or a window or something like that in the wall, it's not gonna work in this case. This method really only suits a wall with nothing hosted to it. So it's sketch is the outside of the wall in principle. Um, so I'm gonna use the element get location node in this case. And this is gonna give us the location line for the wall, which is typically gonna be a line that shows the extent of the wall. Um, from this, we can get the center point of that line and the normal, which is gonna be the, the normal plane of the wall. So I'm gonna use a curve.point at parameter node and also a curve.normal at parameter node. In this case, we'll get our point and we'll also get our normal and we'll just work at 0.5 for our parameter, which is halfway along. From this, I can turn this into a plane which we can then intersect. So with an origin and a normal, um, we can now intersect this with our actual geometry that we're generating further down. So what I'll do is just move this forward. Let's turn off some of these things that we don't need to see. And now what we can do is do an actual intersection. Now it looks like I do have a error there, so I probably need to switch my geometry scaling to extra large. There we go. Okay, so in this case, um, I'll just take that element again. It looks like it's um, struggled to collect some of those things. Might just reset this function. Interesting. It's weird that switching the geometry scaling completely undid that whole task. I'm just gonna regenerate my script and hopefully Oh, Dynamo, you buggy, buggy thing. Here's our mesh. Here's our geometry. Splitting that with the surface. Gives us one solid. <sighs> Some of Dynamo is pretty buggy like that. I'm just gonna go back to medium. See if it makes a difference. Oh, there you go. So. I guess we're just gonna wear that error. <laughs> a very strange bug there. Um, I guess there's maybe a tolerance that it's missing out on in how it's analyzing that geometry, um, which causes it to not be able to split using the poly surface. Very weird. If anyone knows why that happened, feel free to let me know. For now, I'm just gonna accept that there might be an error here. Okay, so we're gonna intersect um, this with the plane, which should now give us a surface. This surface is effectively going to be this wall, but at its center or location line. From this, I can get its perimeter curves. And that is effectively the sketch that I'm targeting in my new wall that I'm creating. Now, you could simplify this a little bit. Um, there are ways you could uh, reapproximate this wall's geometry. Um, if your surface is too detailed and you have far too many lines, I should have about 19, yes, 19 in this case, which isn't too bad. Um, so if you do find you have something, say, like 300 lines, I would recommend just trying to approximate the geometry on the line to some degree. You could do this using a tolerance of um, what angle is between each point along the curve and filter out the points that are at a too shallow of an angle and then reconstruct that back into a new poly curve. That's probably my recommendation of how you could do that. Um, but I'm not gonna do it here just cause like most cases should probably be okay at this point. Um, we're gonna use this to create a new wall with a sketch. So it's up to you. You can always just flatten at this point just to keep things simple. Just to get rid of these complex levels we were dealing with. 
Um, but the next thing we want to do now is um, actually create our wall by profile. So there's actually a node in Wombat Dynamo, um, which I don't actually use very often, I'll be honest. Um, in this case, you can use the wall by, co by profile, I think. Um, yes, so this is the one that I use in this case. Um, and it's fairly straightforward. Um, there's actually a lot of great nodes in here. I just I just wasn't aware that Wombat was being kept up to date. Um, it looks like it, it's actually been updated in 2021. So it looks like they are keeping it up to date. So maybe I'll try, use, try using it more in the future. Anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the start point of each curve and we're gonna find the lowest point on the, on the curve's profile. So I'm just gonna get the start point of each curve and I'm gonna get the Z value of each of those. And I just want to find the lowest value. So I'm going to use a minimum item node to get the lowest possible height. So we've got a list and then we've got the minimum minimum height, which is 2190 below the origin. Um, so in this case, I also need to compare this to the height of the level that I'm going to place this wall at. Because we do need to, to place the bottom of this wall at the lowest point of the profile sketch for it to sit in the right position. That's part of how this creation method works. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to get a levels dropdown so that I can pick which level I want this wall to belong to. You could use the original walls level if you really wanted to. I'm just going to manually pick the foundation level. Um, in this case, I'm going to use the level.plane node um, from Clockwork. And this should return a plane that represents that level. From here, I can get the plane's origin point and I can check the height of that. So I'll use the point.z node again here. Now we can compare these two things. So I'm just going to put these up next to each other. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to subtract the minimum point from the plane point to find that offset that we need to, to achieve the set out. So we need to downset this by 1390 millimeters or thereabouts. Okay, um, so in this case, we're pretty much ready. Um, we just need one more thing, which is a wall type. So I'm going to make a wall type. I'll get a wall type node. Um, where is it? There we go, wall types. And I'll just pick in this case, um, just a fairly basic wall. I'll just pick the foundation concrete wall. So at this point, I'm gonna to switch to manual mode, um, save my script. I'm gonna firstly take in this case, my profile, which is my curves. I'm gonna take in this case, my wall type, my level, and the difference as the base offset. And if I just minimize Dynamo a little bit, and I just have a look at what's gonna happen here, if I run, we can see we've just generated the wall. Now you might need to flip it. It might not necessarily have orientated the right way, but if I do flip it, you can see that I do now have a new wall um, whose sketch is associated to the topography. Um, so a pretty handy little workflow. Um, you could obviously package it a bit more neatly. Again, if this is a really complex profile, you might want to potentially update it. You might run into some errors depending on how complex your topography is. Um, but hopefully, um, if you're following along in a similar project, you'll have seen something that looks a little bit like this. Um, so hopefully that's useful. And probably um, one extra thing to add is if you want the top of the wall to follow the topography as well, um, that's fairly straightforward too. Uh, what you can do is just take the topo and move it upwards. And we're gonna split the resultant initial split geometry by this as well. So I'm gonna translate in this case my topo in the Z direction by a nominal number. So in this case, let's say we wanna do something like a two meter high fence, for example. Now in this case, um, I'm just also gonna make sure that I've frozen my script but what I'm going to do is create a copy of the topo and from this object, I'm then going to split this as well. So I'm going to take this and split it again with the topo. And I'm now just going to take one of these items. You could use a similar method to what we used before. In this case, I'm just going to take the last item. I found typically the last item tends to be the one below. Um, so what I'll do is just do a last item at, and I'll need to work at level two by the looks of it. Yes, at level two. If I work at level two, um, I should now also have a wall that also looks like this on the top as well. So now instead I can just um, intersect this with the plane, unfreeze this, run the script, and now I can see I've got a wall that follows along the top 
as well as the bottom um, as well. So in this case, we can see that we've achieved um, a better outcome again, and maybe this is a little bit more practical um, than just having the bottom of the wall follow the topo. Um, and hopefully that sort of helps show you um, how you can achieve both the top and the bottom of the wall together. So there we go. Um, thanks again for the request. And um, it was a good one and it taught me a little bit as well. I hadn't actually done this before um, because like I said, this doesn't necessarily really represent a constructed condition um, in most cases. So we don't tend to use it on projects. Um, but maybe it was useful for you. Maybe you'll find some practical applications for it. I'm probably overlooking a few real use cases for this. Um, but anyway, hopefully that taught you a little bit more. Anyway, um, if anyone else ever has user requests, feel free to leave them. I, I try to take them on whenever I can, um, if, especially if they're things that are relevant to things I've already done before. Anyway, if you're not already following and subscribing, uh, feel free to do so, and I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Thanks, take care, bye.